Let's resin this painting. So today we are going to be, I'm going to be resining quite a few paintings, so I'm going to be uh, mixing up more than I would need for this artwork. Normally uh, you could refer to the instructions that come with your resin and it will tell you based on the square footage of your artwork how much resin you should mix up. Your resin comes in two parts. You have your resin and you have your hardener. I'm using Art & Glow resin today, uh, but I have used East Coast resin brand, I've used Art resin brand, and they both work just as well. East Coast resin and Art & Glow are your more, um, your more affordable options. So I'm going to mix up, materials wise you want to have gloves, you want to have your resin, you want to have a stir stick, something that could also spread and stir, a double duty thing, sort of tool. Um, I love these cups because they are translucent, you can see your liquid level also, uh, it has the measurements on there so you can see where your levels come to. You mix the resin, half resin, half hardener. So today I'm gonna to do 12 ounces of resin to uh, 12 ounces of hardener coming up to the 24 ounce mark. I probably could use more than that for the amount of paintings that I'm doing today, but uh, I don't want to be stirring and uh, sloshing it out of the cup. So I'm gonna, sorry, concentrating and talking is not easy. I'm just going to do 24 ounces at a time and see how far that gets me. Another thing you need is this handy dandy torch, culinary torch. You can get them on Amazon. That's where I got mine. I can put a link in the description. That helps with getting the bubbles out afterwards. To figure out which one of those goes on which. Some brands actually mark the cap for the resin differently than the cap for the hardener, which is helpful because if you put the vice versa cap on, the incorrect cap on the wrong bottle, it could potentially cause the chemical reaction that would then harden the artwork and hard, harden the resin on the cap and then you could potentially have your cap fused to your bottle, which would not be good. So now I'm stirring this mixture. You have to stir it for three to five minutes. Uh, so this is gonna take a while. I am resining on top of this artwork uh, and two or three others. And then I have some artwork that I'm gonna play around with actually putting the resin on the bottom today. Um, I had one that I did that with. I did a layer of white paint to prime the canvas and then I put a layer of resin and then I did my acrylic pour painting on top of the resin and it turned out gorgeous. I love it. You can find a video of it on my website. It's called Nebula. I forget which number it is. I, I number my paintings and I also name them it is called Nebula, and it's beautiful, I love it, and I want to make more like it. This one is called Jupiter. It also has a video online that you can go check it out in detail. I take the videos of the paintings when they're still wet. Um, I, I have a hard time once I've resined, once it's dry and I resin it, the reflections are just so hard to work with. It's like, it's like trying to pick, take a picture uh, of a mirror. You, you just get more picture of the camera and whatever is in the room than of the actual painting artwork. So that is why I do it that way. I've not been timing this, but I think I'm at about two minutes ago. One more minute to go. So today, I uh, published a video on YouTube called um, Materials Tutorial, Best Materials, uh, Acrylic Pour, Best Materials Tutorial, something like that. And I hope you check it out if you haven't already. It just talks about the, my ingredients that I use for 
the acrylic pores and why I use them. I'll also talk about resin a little bit in that, but this is more of my instructional resin video. Um, but I, I use golden acrylics exclusively for my paint and also for one of my pouring mediums. I use two pouring mediums, the GAC 800, which is golden brand product, and then Flood Floatrol. And the reason is that golden is the only brand that really um, provides a density chart, which allows me to not have to use silicone. I don't use silicone like uh, the majority of the artists out there. Um, I, I believe that it could compromise the quality of the end result artwork. We don't know if it will yellow over time. And I want to sell my paintings to an audience and feel good about them not yellowing on their wall 10 years down the road. So with the density chart, you can know that the denser pigments are going to fall down to the bottom layer and the uh, less dense pigments will come to the top. And so therefore you can layer them in a way that you can predict that they'll try to switch places and then you will get that cellular formation that everyone loves so much. Uh, so yeah, Golden Brand gives you the information to do that. All right, so here we go. I've mixed it for five minutes. Um, I don't know if you can see in there, but it's it's got air bubbles. You're not gonna be able to avoid the air bubbles. Um, they do sort of explode and then settle down during the mixing process. All right, so now I'm pouring the resin onto the canvas. It's not a canvas. It's a wooden panel. I don't I don't I don't work on canvases. I Some of my first paintings I did on canvases and it just made a huge puddle in the middle and so then the paint wasn't evenly distributed and it cracked down the middle. Crazing cracking is a problem with acrylic pouring. Uh, because the paint is applied so thick you end up, uh, the paint dries from the bottom layer down a top layer down. So um, whatever is exposed to the air sort of dries with a, a pudding skin sort of thing. And that pudding skin gets a lot of tension on it because the under layers uh, are still liquidy and the skin shrinks. They call it a film, I believe. The film on top shrinks as it dries, and then if it if it dries too quickly while the underneath is still uh, liquidy, then then you end up with cracks. The whole top layer will just crack, and it will change the appearance of your artwork. The underneath layers do not reveal the same that's on the top skin film film. All right, so what I'm doing now is I am spreading this out. You don't have to really worry about an even coating. Resin is self-leveling. What you have to worry about is avoiding bald spots. You want to make sure you really get it everywhere. And I have taped the bottom, not the sides. I haven't taped the sides of my panel. I have taped the bottom. And I did that because as this flows over the side, and it will start to do that, as it flows over the side, it's going to collect drips on the underneath side, the back of the canvas panel, the wooden panel, or canvas if that's what you're using. And those will harden into giant clear resin bumps that will then keep your artwork from lying flat against the wall that you try to hang it on. And it looks really unprofessional. And you can sand them off with a power sander or something, but that's just an extra step. If you could put tape back there to begin with, you can avoid the extra step of having to sand it off. So I'm using the light from the window here to really see in the glare whether I have any, there's a big bald spot. Cannot talk while concentrating. Um, 
sometimes it's pretty hard to avoid bald spots. Uh, I haven't had much luck with doing one coat perfect resin application. I tend to go back and do a second coat just so it's nice and um, even. Now I'm realizing that I need a little more. So I'm going to pour a little more. It's just not spreading out the way I'd like. And I can tell by the way this is floating across the top that it's setting really fast because I warmed it up. It mixes better when it's warm, so I have had it on the radiator this whole afternoon, but now I see that the, the second pour that I just did on it is almost skating across the first layer, so I might have warmed it up too much. C'est la vie. We will try to make it work. Now, I see it's good and goopy. I'm sure there's still going to be some bald spots, but I'm going to let it settle. And I'm going to use my fingers, because I haven't figured out a better way to do this. I'm going to use my fingers to, to make it go on the sides. Uh, I should do this first so I don't get resin all over my torch. So let me check and make sure you're still with me. You are. So, torch. I don't know if you can see the flame in the sunlight. Probably not, but it's on. You can hear it. As I do this, I can see tiny little craters appearing and then disappearing. And what that is, it's the air bubbles coming to the top with the heat application. Oh, my gas is struggling. I need to refill it. You can hear it. It's getting weaker. You can do it. So tired. Need more gas. Well, maybe that's a good chance to show you that. So, um, this is the refill. Uh, this is just one of the brands out there. Um, I bought this off of Amazon and that nozzle fits perfectly up in the bottom of my torch. I also bought this at my local sports supply store in the camping section and this does not have the right nozzle. This short nozzle does not work. It fits in there, but the gas just leaks right out. It doesn't go up into the torch. So don't buy that for this. This one has the right uh, nozzle. And then it also comes with this cap that has other nozzles inside the cap that, that fits for different applications, I guess. But this one works just fine. So you set it down and you push one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know how long you should push, but I'm scared to push too long. And then we're back to a strong flame. It's that simple. Still seeing some bubbles come up. I do not have a nice even coating, but I'm really not going to worry about it because I will probably do a second coat. It will level out some more, but I also see some bald spots that are just being stubborn. And that's okay. I'm more worried about getting some resin on the side before it gets too hard. And I still want to use some of this other resin that I've mixed up to these other paintings. It's going to dry up soon. Now I'm really getting messy. I honestly haven't figured out a better way to do this. Please, in the comments, 
tell me if you have come up with a better way to apply the resin to the side other than using your glove fingers because I cannot figure out how to do it. I've tried using that spreader slash stir slash putty knife, whatever it is, and I end up still using my fingers because it just doesn't do a great job. So how do you guys do it if you have messed with resin before on an acrylic pour? and applied it to the sides of your paintings. How do you get it on the sides? I'm, you know, last time I resined, I even just used my fingers and went over the surface to make sure there were no ball spots. And I think I might do that again this time. I used the spreader, but I might just go over it again with my fingers. So here we go, I'm doing it. It's really messing up the nice, shiny, glassy surface, but there's no point in having a nice, shiny, glassy surface if there's bald spots. So I'm just sort of massaging it in to get those bald spots covered. And again, it's self-leveling. As long as it's not starting to actually bond and harden, which you have a 40 to 45 minute window, you should be okay. It should level back out. So now it looks really bumpy, but I don't see any more bald spots. Hey. All right, uh, now my fingers are all messy. You should have paper towels around. That's a good idea. I did forget to bring the paper towels in here. So I use this. That's loud, sorry. One more torch and we're gonna call it done for this layer. Second layer, uh, some brands recommend um, sanding first. Other brands don't. They don't say you can't, but they don't say that it's necessary. Uh, our East Coast resin highly recommended sanding if you're doing a second coat after the first 12 hours. Uh, Art and Glow just says basically you need to let it sit for six before you do the second coat, but they don't say that you have to sand it, and they don't say how long what if you have a window where it's too, sorry, can't talk and concentrate. There we go. We're seeing some, some smoke coming off of it, and that's probably not good, but I really don't want to miss any of these air bubbles either. And I still see them coming up. One of these days, maybe I'll get a better lighting situation and camera situation where you can see the air bubbles too. Oh, it's going to be so pretty. i got one little spot I want to touch up over here on the side. Oh yeah, looking good. That's hot. <clears throat> making art is fun, isn't it? I love making art. I'm going to start sounding like Bob Ross here in a second. Okay. Run it over the sides one more time. Catch some of this excess and some of the stuff that's dripped. Put that along the sides. Got a big drip there. Waste not, what not. I didn't mean to be in the camera shot in any of these videos, but it's happening today, isn't it? In my bright red school shirt. My awesome bright red Friday school shirt. What are you gonna do? All right. Y'all, I think we're done. Nope, come on. Let's get a little more on my fingers. Oh, that's hot. Why is it getting hotter? I'm having a major chemical reaction going on over here in the cup. I need to go apply some resin to some other artworks. ASAP. Have a good day. Hope you enjoyed.